everyone. I'm Kim Jacobs, host of The Kim Jacobs Show, where we're bringing balance to the world one household at a time. Listen, we go live every weekday, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I bring guests on that talk about their backstories, things that they've had to overcome to become who they are today. Many of them are balancing and juggling life, and they've become experts in different fields. So they're sharing tips with you to make your life just a little bit easier. Many times as a guest in the studio audience, you'll get a chance to walk away with a missing piece of the puzzle that might be missing in your life. Let's go on this journey together, and I look forward to seeing you Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on The Kim Jacobs Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Yes, we are here on The Kim Jacobs Show, and I'm so excited to have Sabine Becker here with me. How are you today, Sabine? Hello, Kim. So nice to be here. I'm, I'm truly excited to be here. Well, like, I'm truly excited. Why are you so excited? I know why I'm excited, but why are you so excited? <laughs> because of your enthusiasm and the excitement just to, miss, to see you again. Oh, it's such a great pleasure and an honor. And listen, you all are in for a wonderful treat today as you get to hear Sabine's story. Listen, I'm telling you that if you can't gain inspiration from this woman's story, then it's going to be pretty hard to to get you going. Okay. All right. So listen, we are here today to talk with this incredible miracle is what I would consider her an incredible miracle. And I'm going to introduce her to you and then go ahead and jump right into today's discussion. Now, Sabine is, you know what? I, I, I'm so inspired because I've had the pleasure of reading about your story some. So to be able to share it with everyone else is nothing short of of amazing. So I welcome you all here today to the Kim Jacobs show. And as you're grabbing your virtual seats, I definitely will include your comments throughout today's broadcast. But Sabine Becker is an inspirational speaker, a transformational coach, and she enjoys sharing with her audiences the PUSH mes message. We're going to learn what PUSH stands for, but it actually stands for per persevere until success happens. But what does push mean as Sabine breaks it down today? So she'll be sharing about her hard-won lessons that her disability and a near-death experience taught her. Welcome, Sabine Becker, to The Kim Jacobs Show. Woo -woo. Thank you so much for this introduction. I'm so honored to be here and to tell your listeners and your viewers what push really means. Yes. All right, so we, we, we're going to, don't say it yet, Sabine. I can no. tell you, you're ready to go. You're ready to say it. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you in the first five minutes. So I'm like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, Sabine, but before we even get into the push method, when we come back from the commercial break, I would love for you to tell people about your childhood and what transpired, because there's something that happened I guess, you know, during your mom's pregnancy and it led to this particular situation or circumstance in your life. So when we come back, we're going to get to hear some of your story. OK, absolutely. All right, everybody. Listen, I see you all chiming in today. Excited to learn. CTR Media Network is on. Thank you so much for tuning in. And speaking of which. We actually stream on CTR Media Network as well. So you can check out the Kim Jacobs show there. Excited to learn from your featured guest today. Glad to have you, CTR Media Network. And thank you for allowing Kim Jacobs to be a part of your program. I see you, Dennis Spragans, as well. Ben, ben, ben was okay. So, yes. So we're going to talk about that, Sean. So I'm not putting your comment up yet, but I definitely will shortly. Okay. I love that push persevere until success happens. Yes, we have with us Sabine Becker, and we will be right back to hear her story right after this commercial break. I'm attorney Charles Everidge. I started out representing insurance companies until my father was seriously injured at work. Four of his fingers were amputated. Our family went through a lot, so I know what you're going through as an injured worker. If you've been hurt on the job, call me now. I'll fight to get the workers' comp benefits you may deserve. I'll fight for you like family. Put my experience to work for you. 
Call 704-457-5000, the first call for injured workers. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Kim Jacobs Show. And Sabine is with us today to share her story. And again, it's life it's life changing as you hear it. So tell us about your birth. First of all, I'd like to hear about that because that kind of leads into the rest of the story. OK. OK. So I was born in Germany and my mom, unbeknownst to her, I, I mean, she knew that she was taking it, but she did not know that it will harm her fetus. Her doctor told her to take the drug thalidomide, which would help her to alleviate morning sickness. And so mm -hmm. in those days, and it was early 60s in post-war Germany, Everybody still trusted their doctors. If a doctor said something, you will do it. Right. And so my mom took the drug thalidomide, and that, unfortunately, my arms didn't grow. That's how I was born. I was born with very, very small arms, and I was one of tw approximately 20,000 babies that were, was born with all kinds of disabilities and 60%, 60% of the babies never saw their first birthday. So I really oh my consider God. myself right from the start as a survivor. Absolutely. Yeah. So just, yeah, just right, right off the bat, you are yeah. out of all I, of the billions of sperm, you made it through yeah. and you literally um, made it here on this, on this earth. And yes. in spite of the, yeah. the tinier arms. Yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. Let me, let me ask arms. now, the, the little mod is not according to, now this is again, her story, everyone. So we're not claiming anything medically or right. anything of that nature, because that's not what the show is about. It's just her sharing her story and what happened with her mom. Okay. So the little mod though, according to Wikipedia is, is, is sold under the brand name of Contergan. And yes. mm -hmm. And it's among other drugs is a medication used to treat a number of cancers, including multimyeloma, graft heart versus host disease, and a number of skin conditions, including complica complications of leprosy is what it is. Mm -hmm. so I don't even see as I'm reading here. Okay. So when first released, the little mile was promoted yeah. for anxiety, trouble, sleeping, tension, and morning sickness. And that was in the in the early like 1957s yeah. time frame when yeah. it was first released. So the information that I'm getting, just so you all also know it, and I'll put it in the link here, is off of Wikipedia. And I like to be able to cite the sources. So this is not mm -hmm. him saying this. This is one. <laughs> okay. All right. So Sabine, when your mom was she told in advance prior to you giving her giving birth that you would come with this? No, because missing? no, nobody knew about it. The doctors didn't know because what happens, the drug was brought too quickly on the market. And that's a whole other show. Okay. Right, right. right. <laughs> we'll let the FDA really... deal with that or whoever. Y'all exactly. deal with that. Go ahead. Exactly. exactly. But it was uh, not um, tested sufficiently. And that's why this thalidomide tragedy even could happen. I know today they are still carefully using the drug thalidomide for the cancer and leprosy, but it's very carefully uh, monitored today. But in the 19, late 50s and early 60s, I was born in early 62, it was just given out. And in German, it was even called the sugar pill. It's as easy as a sugar pill. So they made it for these women. Here you have a, a drug which will help you alleviate morning sickness and insomnia and nervousness, whatever it was. But it was mostly for morning sickness. So nobody had any idea that they didn't link all these births before me because I'm very a late thalidomide baby, they didn't link the birth before me to thalidomide. The, all the, it's, wow. it's, yeah, it's just, a, it's a tragedy. And it was a tragedy, not only for us, the children, and now of course adults, but also for our families. Wow. Because I would like everybody to imagine, because this was post-war Germany. And 
there was there were no resources for my parents there was no help for my parents mm. they were just there what do we do with this child now if she even survives because that was just even questionable right. they said how would she go to school how how would she even function independently and would she ever marry would she ever have children right. so all these questions went through my parents heads and they just did not know but you know my parents i uh, really they were very modern for their times okay. and they said we are not going to baby sabine along absolutely <laughs> not she is going to learn how to use her feet okay for all daily tasks and they were determined to find just the right uh, physical and occupational therapist to okay. teach me how to use that left foot for all daily tasks they That's were very incredible. determined <laughs> and that was uh, uh, outrageous for the time you know because we didn't have the internet we didn't have anything at the time so all these people needed just to figure this out on their own and no support groups it, it must really have been a challenging time for my parents and there was also this post war uh or oh, you know disabilities a second class citizen or you know uh this victimhood mentality right. and it was just and even superstition i hate to say it there was even <laughs> superstition around my disability i mean we are talking completely different times i mean i'm 60 yeah i'm 60 so it was a long time ago and again i You're said post war i'm 60 <laughs> Get yeah. out of here. No, no seriously, that that is a moment for pause because okay. you do not look anywhere near 60 years old at all. No, I mean thank seriously, thank put thank it in the comment section thank everybody. <laughs> Unbelievable. You do thank not you so look much. <laughs> thank oh you God. so much. I, I do a lot to not look 60. You know, I exercise a lot. I eat right and I I'm truly a happy person and I think that also that uh, that mentality is helping me a lot too i i love life i love people i love what i'm doing for work i love my family so that i love you be, yeah. sabine <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> you're you're so just fun. your joy and enthusiasm yeah. is contagious i'm so excited that you're thank here you today thank you so much thank you so thank you ask, kim when when did you realize that you were different than some of the other children Mm -hmm. in your own journey excellent question um i realized that very very late and this is really going to surprise i know it's going to surprise people every time i'm saying it it's like oh my gosh what i only realized when i was about 12 years old that i was different because wow. the reason why i was not treated different my parents treated me exactly like my brother I had the same household chores which I couldn't get out of. I learned how to vacuum, I learned how to do the dishes, I learned how to cook. I learned everything any any other boy or girl will learn when they have when they're growing up. So I never thought of myself as different and because I had this outgoing personality, I always had that outgoing personality. Uh, the, you know, yeah people and children at the time just took easily to me they they asked sometimes about my little arms and i said i was born this way and end of story and then i had my little bicycle a modified bicycle with longer handlebars uh, i did the bicycle i did roller skating i did ice skating i did skiing so nobody really thought of me different because i didn't think of myself different i was the kid just a regular kid in that neighborhood until age of 12 and what I happened decided, then at the age of 12 <laughs> yeah. i decided unbelievable so that i love flying and that i will become a flight attendant and that's what i decided and because when i decide something i'm just going to do it right. but yeah but flight attendant with very little arms quite frankly that's not going to work but 
But um, I had a very good friend in Germany where I grew up. And um, her father was a pilot for Lufthansa, German Airways. And he said to me, Sabine, you know, you really cannot be a flight attendant. But how about air traffic controller? I said, oh, air traffic controller. Ooh, ooh, yeah. And he said, yeah. you can do that. And then many years later, he took me up in the Frankfurt air traffic control tower. Oh. And I was so inspired by all this happening in the tower. And I, this is what I'm going to do. Wait, wait. Okay, <laughs> so stop for a second. What is that person's name again? Um, her name was Sabine, like my name, Sabine. And Sabine. Uh, her, yes, my little friend was Sabine too. So her and her father was the senior pilot with uh, Lufthansa German Airways. And that's the only reason why I even could get into the Frankfurt tra oh, air traffic control tower. So Shout out but, to Sabine and to her daddy for encouraging an alternative versus just right, taking a right. dream away. There are so many exactly. dream thieves around here exactly. in life. I call them dream thieves. And you do not want to be associated with people that will steal your dream, right? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> because that, that taught me a, a huge lesson that sometimes no matter what you do, for some reason, you do not achieve the results you would like to see. Yes, but yes. there are always other ways of doing things. So that was my biggest lesson during my teenage years. When I was 18, I learned that lesson. Uh, that Well, when I was 12, I, I did see I cannot be flight attendant with my little arms this way. But I could do something else in aviation. Now... I did not pass the air traffic control exam <laughs> because, because I cannot think that way. You know, it's <laughs> there, there's a certain way you gotta think to bring all the airplanes down safely. So okay, okay. I just learned again. <laughs> but that taught me such a huge lesson. Don't give up on your dream. You might have to find a different way to go to it. Now, did I achieve it? No. I'm <laughs> the first one to say no. But what I did, I knew I love people. I love helping people. That's why I turned to social work and psychology instead. <laughs> and I'm not <laughs> but still, you know, my dream of flying, it taught me a huge lesson. Never and never give up. Well, I'm so glad that you had that initial dream, Sabine. Yes. And yes. the fact is, I actually believe that we as a society and as a world made out better because you have a hand in social work. So I believe ah. that lives are better as a result of you, not just only working the controllers and everything, yeah, you right. your body part, um, which is your feet, that would allow you to, man to manage those controls. But oh, yeah. I am excited yeah. that he's allowing you to use your heart to be Absolutely. able to touch the hearts of so many other people. And that's what Sabine is doing here today on the Kim Jacobs Show. She's officially using not arms, not legs, not just a beautiful smile and hair flowing, but her heart. And she's sharing her story of her life lessons with us today. So I am excited because I do want to get to know too. Let me put some of the comments up from the studio audience. Woo, beautiful story and inspiring. Thank you. Says. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Uh, someone, Ted Talk from Sikibin says, great advice. Uh, sending love to you as well, people are saying. I see all of your comments and I will be sharing them. Yes, make sure you all share this broadcast. Share the broadcast with your friends, your coworkers. Let people know that this is happening here and to tune in. Mon on Monday through Friday, we are on all kinds of platforms and I'll be sharing with you specifically how you can be on certain platforms throughout the week to make sure that you stay connected with us. Here on Dr. Les Brown's Facebook page, we're here on Mondays. And so thank you so much, Dr. Les Brown, for allowing the Kim Jacobs Show to be mm -hmm. here with you on Mondays. All right. So no, she did not look like 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> she was 50, maybe even slightly less is what Eugene <laughs> says. She is is a blessing indeed. All right, all right. I see all of your comments. Sean actually said your story is my story. Wow. Oh, yeah. Sean. That's interesting. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about your story, Sean, too, and maybe the two of you can yeah. connect. Uh, I know maybe not right this one moment, but oh, let me actually, you might be able to connect right now, too. Let me go ahead and do this. 
I'll put right here in the comment section. That is interesting. The link. So you can yeah. come on screen if you'd like to meet Sabine personally during the broadcast. I put the link right there in the comment section, Sean, and we welcome you to pop on screen for a few moments if you like. Yeah, okay? let's talk, Sean. Yay. And my mommy's here. She said, good morning. Unbelievable. Yes. Oh. Now, thankfully, we know more of who you, of, about these birth defects. Yes. And Jenna said, plus, all natural placebo. I don't, I don't know, but she didn't, her mom clearly didn't get that, whatever that was. Wow. No. No clinical research. <laughs> Lots of comments coming in. Listen, we're talking with Sabine Becker today, and her story is nothing short of amazing. And to stay connected with her, let people know how they can stay connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sean, if you hear me, you can connect. Everybody can connect with me. SabineBeckerSpeaks.com. I would love to hear from you. I would love to connect with you. I, I really would love to talk to you more. Absolutely. And we're going to talk more with Sabine right after this commercial break. I'd love to hear how I know your younger years, but maybe you went on and where did you study and tell us some more about some of your, as you matriculated on through life, talk to us a little <laughs> bit more about that when, oh, hey, before we take a commercial break, guess who just popped in the studio? And I am going to change this so that you can pop on now. Come on, Ooh. Sean. Hi. Hey, Sean. Hey. Hello, Sean. Hi. What's going on? Hello. Where are you coming from? Hey, uh, give me a second. I just need to. I just need to pause. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All Sorry. right. Let me just figure out where. When you figure it out, put um, give me a thumbs up, and I'll pull you back in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So listen, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, hopefully Sean will have it figured out, and we can pop him on screen. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. All right, everyone. We're talking with Sabine Becker. And I see the thumbs up. Okay, Sean, we're going to pull you in now. Okay, what's your comment, Sean? Hi. Uh, uh, not so much any uh, comment. Uh, I was actually just trying to figure out. I was hearing you on Facebook. But it, it also it was also streaming in StreamYard. So I had to figure out where There's I was a getting a lot of the, different the things. Episode. Right. But um, uh, as you can see, I was also born missing my, my right arm. Yeah. Um, I have a congenital... Um, uh, conjoint pinky. Uh, I was born with um, um, shortened femurs, uh, one horseshoe shaped kidney. I'm missing uh, multiple bones in my hands and both of my feet, uh, as well as uh, the small bone, the tibia in the bottom of each of my legs. Um, and my mother was prescribed a morning sickness medication, just like Sabine's mom was. Oh, thalidomide? Yep. It was, it's a, a, a generational drug. So after in the United States, after they did away yeah. with thalidomide, the right. scientists in their brilliance at, at Merck and the different pharmaceutical companies uh, chose to reformulate the drug because yeah. they really were in search of, of, a, of a quality morning sickness medication, which didn't exist at the time. And in their recalculation and their recalibration of the chemistry, uh, they reissued it under a different name because thalidomide was not something anybody was going to willingly take. No. And Bendectin hit the market, and Bendectin caused a lot of the same clinical issues um, to people like myself. And um, it was actually taken off of the shelves in, in the United States in 1984 because of yeah. over litigation. Uh, the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies decided that they were no longer going to be, um, you know, paying the legal fees and, and the possible uh, financial ramifications. Yeah. Where are you getting those facts, Sean, so that we can let people know the site? I like so that. So I posted in the uh, comments a um, a uh, in in Facebook. I'm not on Facebook right now. I'm on StreamYard. So when you go into Facebook on in the feed, there is a uh, an article that I posted from the uh, National Institute of Health, as well as a um, a link to it's called uh, birthdefects.org. And birthdefects.org is not an organization that I'm associated with, but it is was built by a mother of a child who also was born with severe uh, con multiple congenital defects. She took Bendectin as well, and she has spent her life um, um, dedicated to doing the research, uh, both from a litigation side and from a scientific uh, scientific side, on mm. a variety of different birth defects. Even people who were born from fathers who served in Vietnam who were exposed to Agent Orange um, and, and all down the line, right. people who have been exposed to to uh, 
chemicals in water, uh, you know, in Flint, Michigan, and, and all across mm -hmm. the world. Uh, there, they, she has a host of information in, in, in the, on that website that okay. discusses uh, different. I just different put it things. up as well. I put it up here. Sean Aronson says birthdefects.org forward slash Benecton. So that's where the information is that he's sharing. And do you have a question or anything for our guest today? Uh, no, I don't have a question. I just, I just wanted to share that, you know, we, we have such a similar story. Um, you know, when I was born, the doctors told my mother that I was never going to walk or talk. No, no, I was most no. likely not going to, I was mentally disabled, that they should mm -hmm. put me in an institution and forget they yeah. ever had me. And yeah. my, mo my mother knew that I made eye contact with her and she took me home. Mm. She saw to it that mm. I got into an excellent uh, handicap school on Long Island, New York. I had wow. uh, a lot of OT and PT and I started out with uh, yeah. um, um, a prosthesis and, and leg braces. Mm. I had major surgeries all through my yeah, childhood. I even competed in the New York State Games for the Physically Challenged. So to your point, Sabine, you know, I did not let my disabilities hold me back. Um, whoop, whoop, having, whoop, having, whoop. Relationships, <laughs> having relationships with non-disabled people, um, yeah. they forget that I'm disabled within a very short time. Right. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people have said, use your other hand or, you know, they, yeah. I'll have something in my left hand and they'll go to hand me something yeah. and they'll say, why can't, and they'll forget that I'm missing my right arm. Right, right. And it's just because, you know, we, when you, when you overcome those kinds of disabilities, people, intuitively just they don't see you as a disabled person anymore no. they just see you as a as a regular person and um and Which I've is also that good or bad let me i want i would love to hear no it. i mean good. it's, it's, it's great good. you know it's it's a it's a great thing to not <laughs> right. you know to, to to have people who can get close to you and to develop the kind of normalized relationships right. where you don't feel stigmatized now of course when we go out in public sabine i'm sure you and i both feel we are both the the subject and the object of everyone's oh, yeah. interest. You don't have to have uh, tiny arms to be the subject of people's conversation. Yeah, you have exactly. Long exactly. arms and all kind of other body parts, and people still talking about you. So. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I, I promise you, when Sabine like and I go to the mall, star. everyone is staring at us. <laughs> well, you know? yeah, um, yeah. There, there are people, and and it, you know, there, there's 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 good and bad. I mean, there's. People who have reacted in very in, in a lot of uh, varying ways towards, I'm sure, her and myself. People who are deathly afraid of something that they don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, people react in in both horror and 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 they 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 laugh hysterically. Right. I've been asked if I'm a real person. People come up to me and, and touch my arm as if I'm no. uh, like not Ooh. a real person. Like as if like they just they just want to mm -hmm. like feel. Is this real? Like what does this feel like? And so I've had a variety of different wow. over the course mm. of my life. And it's different for me now. When I was young, I would react with with a bit of anger, and I would I would get upset if somebody violated sort of my personal space. But I'm a father, and my, my six and my nine year olds, um, you know, I need to show them a different example. And so, you know, I'm a lot more accepting, particularly mm -hmm. of, of children, um, you know, who who are going to be naturally inquisitive. And when I was a kid, it didn't occur to me, or I didn't care. As much that people, you definitely a talker, Sean. You don't be yeah. playing. <laughs> you can hey, go on and on. Listen, let me let me tell you this for a yeah. second. I'm gonna give you like one more minute to finish your story piece because I definitely want to spend some more time talking with Sabine here as well, and she's only gonna smile and be like, oh, you know, so gracious. I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to take your time. I'm, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I just other part of me as a training and a talk show host, and I train people on how to start their own talk shows from scratch. By the way, yeah. So. I could that's, train the, that's the less brown power voice in me. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the power <laughs> in about in about you know, thirty him, more him, seconds. Wrap it up and tell us. Him and John taught me how to just keep talking. So, <laughs> Go ahead, thirty seconds. But I would love to connect with you, Sabine, after the show somehow. Absolutely. Just so we can just share our, our you know. Yes, I would love to, and, Sean. And uh, you saw my website. Uh, it's on the ticker. Uh, you see my website sometimes coming up and connect with me like that. And I'm on Facebook. Everybody, so I'm on much, Facebook. Sean, Thank me. for coming here today. <laughs> Tell right, everybody bye, Sean. Having me. It was great bye, meeting Sean. you guys. Take bye. care. Bye. Meeting you. And God bless you on your journey. You're thank amazing. you so yeah. much. You too. Indeed. All right. All right. So I am happy that Sean took the time to come on. His story is clearly nothing short of Thank amazing. you, it's it's Sean. And Sean, you can definitely come and be a guest here on the Kim Jacobs show as well. I'd love to be able to interview you for real too and hear your whole story. Listen, Sabine, I would like for you to tell us about even just like your 
your college years and what you studied and stuff like that. Did you, did you go to college too? Yes, absolutely. It's for social work and uh, psychology. Oh. And that was seven years of college. <laughs> like, oh my God. That's because amazing. Our parents really pushed us to, towards college. There was not, if you go to college, it's when. And I that was it. just, education was very important, especially, and my brother also got a fabulous education. But especially if you have a disability like myself, it's a ticket into more independence. Okay. Uh, that's, you know, if you don't have an education, especially if you're this disabled, it's harder. Okay. So I really took seven years out of my life and I'm glad that I did. And I worked mostly with people with disabilities, children with disabilities, I love children. And then also um, challenged adults, uh, challenged youth, I should say, young adults. A, a job core uh, in Alaska. Alaska is a code completely different <laughs> chapter wow. in my life. Uh, wow. I mean, we, we we would need two hours at least. Okay. okay. <laughs> all the we could let Sean come in for a minute because then that would just be like, okay, no, we're not going to get through this. <laughs> well, Sean was awesome. But, you it know, really sense. quick, really quick on, he brought up a very, very valid point of um, this all happened in Germany, in Europe, and some in uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. But the United States of America, um, what was her name? The Surgeon General uh, Kelsey, uh, Francis Kelsey, Francis Kelsey, the Surgeon General at the time in the early sixties. She did not allow thalidomide into the country. The FDA did not allow it, mm -hmm. and that's why it's rare to see thalidomide. Um, affected people like myself here in this country they're mostly from overseas like i'm from overseas so that that was a good point he brought up because wow. it was the fda prohibited thalidomide they saw right away this is causing the burst defects and thanks to francis dr francis kelsey i just met her two daughters the other day oh. both of them yeah so it was such an honor to meet the daughters of a lady who just said no it's, it's speak, a little mic. speaking yeah. of speaking of children motherhood yeah. was in your future too so absolutely I'm gonna up <laughs> and show this beautiful picture because not yeah. only have you had to endure being born with tiny arms but guess yeah. what you mm -hmm. had the joy and the privilege of becoming a mommy and a wife so when we come <laughs> back after this commercial break, I want you to talk to us about it, what it was like becoming a mom. My favorite ever theme. Oh, <laughs> being <mommy>. okay. <laughs> right when we come back after this commercial break, and you can see oh, the smile. Please. She has her cheeks are burning. <laughs> Clearly, this is her greatest joy <laughs> in life. I cannot Thank wait you. for us to learn more about her experience as a mom right after this. CTR break. Media Network was created for today's podcasters. We provide a safe haven for content creators that are everyday people doing extraordinary things. We have a system of positioning, monetization training, coaching, and support for our podcasters' success. CTR Media Network simply bridges that gap with a level playing field for your dreams to come true cost effectively. Our team provides a premium service and experience for our podcasters to grow. CTR Media Network provides access, support, resources, coaching, and community for our podcasters to win, if you put in the work. We believe that we are living in a unique time which requires you to share your message of hope with millions of people around the world. Remember that the world is never too saturated for you, your voice and message. A platform for positive impactful media where the content creators are in the driver's seat. Visit our website today by going to www.ctrmedianetwork.com. All right, everyone, we're back and we're talking with Sabine Becker. Tell us about motherhood, Sabine. Oh, I could talk all day about motherhood. I have a son, a beautiful, beautiful son. His name is Nicola. And there he is, the young man smiling with that beard. And he is just the love of my life. And these are my three grandchildren. I'm lucky to have three grandchildren. The bigger one is Ronan. The middle one is Declan. 
And the small one, believe it or not, his name is Kiwi. Kiwi, like the fruit, Kiwi. <laughs> Get out of here. Now, so the one with the beard is your son? Yes, uh -huh. that's my son. Yeah, he's <laughs> sort of... He will turn 39 in a few days. Can you believe oh it? Oh my goodness. I <laughs> promise. That's what I'm saying. You cannot look like you, that man's mama. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> I am his mama. <laughs> You're his mama. I am mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. But, you know, yeah. And, you know, motherhood. So I that has been the hardest thing in my life. I have done a lot of hard things, and we didn't even get through the other hard thing. But uh, this motherhood has been the hardest thing in my life because when you're born with very small arms then you know you have questions okay how am i going to change his diapers oh there's me <laughs> look at that survivor yeah yeah i love that yeah and here there you go there's already a picture and that's exactly one of the challenges i had how to carry my son i mean mothers around the world they just take their babies in their arms mm. now obviously i could not i could hold him with my legs but i could not hold him in my arms so this has been the solution again don't give up if you can't do something find different ways of doing things so my baby nicola has been almost all day long attached to me with that baby carrier and that gave us such a great bond because we, we have been attached to each other. And his diapers, I changed with my feet. I dressed him with my feet. And uh, I, oh, here it is, yeah. I fed him using my feet. It was, I mean, that part was kind of easy. You, you see how he sits in, a, in a, some sort of a high chair. And I prepared the meal with my feet, fed him with my feet. And always had him super close to me. Wow, I am so yeah. proud of you, Sabine. It and just, I, uh, yeah. I'm going to connect. I, mean, I want to make sure I connect you too with another and a young lady named Tawana Williams. I'm not sure. Are you familiar with her? You but know, she, uh, yeah, she wrote yeah, a book yeah. called "Unarmed but Dangerous." And I yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, I would love to be connected with her. I, I know who she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's I know. Amazing as well. Yeah, I've had her. Yeah. years passed on one of my yeah. shows yeah wow. and yeah that certainly has been the the most challenging part of my life to figure all these things out uh, that mothers with arms just do although it's difficult to be a mother at the in the under the best circumstances so without uh, arms it's it's tough but my love for my son just pushed me forward day by day by day he and didn't have today, any, he didn't have any defects or anything at all. No, no, because that it's not a uh, genetic uh, the drug. Right. It's just my mother took it and uh, my little arms happened. End of story. So I was a little bit concerned about that, but then of course um, I learned more about the thalidomide. No, he is uh, perfect, just absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I checked if he had all his toes and all his fingers <laughs> when yeah. when he was born. It's like, does he ever have everything? But there was really no concern. But you know, mothers, oh, you know, <laughs> so happy you are a mother, and I'm grateful yeah. that you are able to experience this piece of of life on this side of the earth. I do want to also find out how you transitioned to the United States. And yeah. talk to us too, because something happened specifically on May 17th, 2012. So talk to us about that. Well, yeah. Well, first, the transition to the United States. Nicola and I came to the United States in early 1988. Oh, and okay. so there's a big difference between what happened. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 1980, uh, yeah, that comes many, many years later, the, the event you're talking about. Okay. But we immigrated into the United States. We immigrated out of all the places into Alaska because I had the flair to this day. I have a flair for adventure. And I thought, <laughs> oh, you <laughs> run, walk, do all kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just love adventure. And uh, so we immigrated into Alaska. And I raised my son in Alaska. To, he was 18 years old, graduated from high school. 
Then he went working on the North Slope on the oil fields, and I, I was too cold in Alaska. So I moved down uh, south. Today I'm in, uh, in Southern, oh my God, Southern uh, California in the San Diego area, where it's much, much warmer than Alaska. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is good. This is good. So I'm glad you all made it to the United States. Yes. And here, obviously, lots of opportunities, I'm assuming, opened up absolutely. for you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's it, the United States I still see as a place of opportunity. I mean, you can create your opportunity everywhere. But here, I, I had quite a few opportunities for me work wise and personally also. And today, I'm a public speaker. Uh, I don't know if that would be possible in Europe. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I go once a year to Europe, so I really don't know what they do over in Europe that much anymore. I, I think it was a great uh, place to immigrate to. And my son is serving the United States Army today. And so I'm very oh, proud of him. Yes. A whole movie about the Beckers, right? <laughs> yeah, really. That's kind of like, and sometimes, you know, it really reads like a movie. I cannot even believe this is my life. I live it every day. But yeah, my it's son, it's, uh, Batman, it's, amazing. Yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm going to lean back like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, yeah, so my son is, uh, he works for the CID, which is the FBI in the military branch, and he's hardcore, and he kicks butt, and he's just that little tiny blonde baby, and he's, he's really, he, he did great for himself, awesome. Aw, yeah. you sound like very, such a proud good. mom, that's why oh, you're oh. also so young looking, because you're like, yeah. I'm living adventurously. Not just absolutely. through Alaska and through my child, no, but just like no, everything. No. Motivational yeah. speaking. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I'm just so, so excited about life because then the event <laughs> I will talk about, that really taught me to be excited about life and to appreciate life. Okay, so now clearly I don't know what the event is yet. So when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to hear what this event is that happened on a specific date that you had wrote in about May 17, 2012. We want to know what happened on May 17, 2012, when we come back after this commercial break. All right. All right. We'll be All right. Back. Back. We'll be back. Nothing says I love you more than final expense insurance whole life protection. With funeral advocacy nationwide, saving you and your family 30 to 80% off funerals and cremations. Nothing says I love you more than Get Insured Solutions, LLC. Get Insured Dot Solutions, 704 499 3616. <clears throat> All right, everyone, we're back. We're talking with Sabine Becker, and we want to know what happened on May 17, 2012. Okay. May 17, 2012 changed my life. Because what happened, I was at the time in New Mexico, and um, just to tell you, your listeners and viewers, I do drive. I do drive a non-modified mod car, Okay, I have a picture. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. yeah, Wait a minute. yeah. Okay. There I am. That's this is how I drive with my left foot on the steering wheel, the right foot on the brake. And you know what? I'm really super proud and knock on wood. Everybody just knock on wood. I have never, never caused an accident in over 40 years of driving. Wow. So I, I just want to say that. I do want to I want to say too, and I know this is a whole silly joke. But look how serious you look in, in that video. I know, I know. You, you are not, you are like so serious. You are one of the people that could be an example of how a focused driver should focused. be. Exactly. You're looking up in I'm that rear mirror, I suppose. And you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's, I, I didn't even know that person took a photo at the time. That's, I mean, I'm focused, I'm paying attention. I'm not eating, I'm not drinking, I'm not even talking on the cell. I, I'm just not doing anything because I'm just focused and That's 40 plus thing. years, 
yeah, uh, of driving. But anyhow, so I am driving, right? Okay. So I'm driving in northern New Mexico on May 17, 2012. And it was outside Santa Fe, so a very, very remote area. And I have to say that because it's so pertinent to our to the to the story. And suddenly I see the, the road just changing into bizarre shapes, and it's just like psychedelic suddenly. The colors are changing, the colors are changing red, orange, all kinds what? of weird what? colors. Yes. Oh, come on, Sabine. You telling this like it is a movie. You're doing this on purpose. Tell us what's wrong. <laughs> no, I need to build up. <laughs> just hold on. <laughs> and because that's what I experienced because it was so bizarre. It was like psychedelic. And I'm still thinking, what is it? And suddenly I I lost consciousness. Oh my driving goodness. my car. So I saw all these colors and then everything was gone. And I was driving 70 miles per hour, which was for that road, which was appropriate, and I lost consciousness. And I had a massive stroke while oh I was driving my car. No that was it. you have to yeah. take your time to set that up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it was, so, it, and it was really, it was so beautiful. It was a perfect day in the high desert of New Mexico. And suddenly it turned into this horrifying nightmare mm. because it was just, so it was really like a psychedelic dream. There was no pain, there was nothing, but everything just changed. And so just the right reason- on the spot, Sabine, let's say for one second right there, only because not everyone, I, I don't I don't know what it's like to have a massive stroke or anything, yeah. but I, I cannot even envision the wording that you're saying right now, which is yeah. everything was beautiful, everything was normal. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. all of a sudden, everything yeah. changed. That, Absolutely. That is concerning because that means yeah. that you didn't really have any warning that this was about to go down. Is that what I yes. think I'm hearing you say? I did not have any warning of uh, this is coming. I was healthy. I am healthy. There are no reasons why I had that stroke. I had the doctors examine me and that, it, there was just no reason. Mm -hmm. And it just happened. It was kind of, it was bad luck. But in my bad luck, I was lucky because the only reason why I'm here with you, Kim, today and with your listeners and viewers, the only reason why I'm here is that somebody watched out for me. Uh, yes, uh, indeed. You know, God, he said, that's how Ooh. I see it, at least, that he's not what done with me. I have a message. I need to bring this message out to people. The yeah. message of push, persevere until success happens. Yes. And so I am thinking really that uh, oh. our, 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 you know, God, whoever you, you believe in, really saved my life. And he saved my life because just that day, incidentally, I had a passenger with me. That passenger grabbed the steering wheel in the absolute la last second because the Rio Grande River was right there to my right at 70 miles per hour. I would have crashed through that guardrail and just gone into the Rio Grande River. And I would have been an accident victim and nobody ever would have known that I had a stroke. And that, that's why I'm so, so grateful to, mm. you know, to our higher, higher power. See, I get all choked up right now to our higher power because I wasn't done on this earth. You and got me making really, an ugly face right now. I'm like, the mother, the mother. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, it, 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 it just was destiny uh, that I survived this. And that's why today, and I want to go back there by a little bit, but I'm so passionate. And that's probably the joy of life. Hopefully everybody picks up uh, because I, I, the gratefulness that I survived, something which, which is almost unsurvivable at 70 miles per hour to completely lose consciousness um, right, right next to the Rio Grande River, that just, you know, the higher power definitely was involved in this. But, but still, it was a fight. Well, uh, it was uh, because I learned the push lesson, persevere until success happens early on in my life. Uh, I was, I really needed push 
for the next well, we three all need push. Years. We yeah, all need absolutely. push. Absolutely. Everybody needs push. Because I'm always saying it, you don't need to have a, a disability like myself. You don't need to have a stroke like I had. We all have. Oh my gosh, I see the comments there. All of the comments. I just I want to make sure we get fine. to talk about push in specific, yeah. specifically right after our commercial break. So I want to make sure I flood all of these comments in because there are so yeah. many. And we thank you for all of them. Beautiful thank family, you. beautiful yeah. story. People love you. They're in yeah. tears. They say yeah. Don has a, a similar story. So you guys have to connect because he, he sounds like your twin <laughs> just in another area. That would be an amazing movie. Great. Wow. Listen, y'all, when we come back again, right after this next break, we're going to hear for the rest of this episode about push. Is that Absolutely. fair? Yes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and not only does she do that with her feet, let me let you know, she does a lot of other things with yes. her feet. So she does. What is this that you're doing? This is I'm typing on my iPad. Yes. Yeah, so she type on her iPad. and Makeup. Uh, you, yes. <laughs> putting her mascara on and doing what she needs to do. But when we come back after this commercial break, we're going to talk about push, persevere until success happens. Are y'all ready for this? All right. We will be right back. I just want to let you all know how you can stay connected. That's what we're going to be. I'm going to put flash up here now. Many of you want to know throughout the rest of the week, how you can stay connected with the Kim Jacobs show. Listen, make sure that you go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn your notification bell to all. And when we go live each weekday, you will automatically receive an alert. And that's no matter what platform we're on, you will be able to receive an alert and a notification. You can also like and follow us on our Facebook page at The Kim Jacobs Show. So I'll just put this up and then we're going to come right back to hear about push as we prepare to close today's episode. I, I'm excited about what you're doing in life. It's just <laughs> amazing all right let me get the one thing if i can find it well maybe i can't find it. <laughs> i'm doing too many things by myself today yeah. i usually have oh. like a thousand people helping me backstage here but there we go i'm just gonna play this real quick so you can see it. Right, everyone. Talk to us about push. push. Absolutely. Push. Push. Here it comes. Push. Persevere until success happens. I do, live, do believe that every single difficult journey, uh, and like I said, you don't need a disability. You don't need to have had a stroke while driving your car. We all have difficult journeys we are on in our lives. And I believe every difficult journey starts with a skill of hope. And I say skill, because it's important to know that you can, we all can learn hope. Because my life, certainly you have heard a little bit about my life. In my life, when it started out, it started out with very little hope. And I had to learn how to be hopeful. I started to learn how to expect a positive outcome. Instead of saying, I can't, and this won't happen, and I'm a victim, and why me? I said, okay, this happened. I cannot undo the stroke. I, By the way, I had 365 days of rehabilitation. I could mm. not speak. I could not do anything for myself. I could not walk. I could not use my left foot for all daily tasks. So I am telling you, I had to push, and I started with hope. The doctors didn't think that I could rehabilitate because of very extensive brain damage, but I knew I could. And that's because I learned to expect a positive outcome. And for 365 days, I pushed through speech therapy, occupational therapy, and I had to learn everything again, just like a little kid. I had to learn everything again to do for myself using my feet, uh, getting dressed, even even eating on my own, I had to do everything myself. 
but I definitely know how to use hope as a skill. And the other thing also, which is so important when we are kind of faced with, with adversity, it's how to, to reframe. I'm a big believer in reframing our circumstances. Instead of seeing adversity, oh, why me? Oh my gosh. It, it is, we have, what helped me a lot is mm -hmm. find an anchor thought. An anchor thought that would help me to get through those 365 days of grueling rehabilitation. And my anchor thought was, God saved me. And that's why I need to, to, to make a difference in other people's lives. And that's why I know God has saved me on that very day on, in May 17, 2012. And so I had to reframe this, this adversity into a meaningful opportunity. Wow. And guess what? Guess what? I was scared. I was scared just out of, out of my wits. What if I can't walk? And I had these questions. Oh, uh, maybe I should just give up because the doctors say I will not walk. I will not speak ever again. I, I really just had to um, to reframe and also just believe in myself that I can find success, that I can find the push I need to yeah. get through it. And yes, was I afraid? Yes, I was. But I pushed still through all these, these grueling, grueling days. And today I'm totally independent again. I do everything. I do my makeup. I do my hair. I get dressed. I eat on my own again. I drive my car on my own again. I am 100% rehabilitated. Wow. And I'm telling you, it is thanks to push and also God who has helped me, who has given me a push, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the good thing because this. a lot of people give up, Sabine, yeah. and, yeah, and definitely would never consider getting back in a vehicle again. But you push yeah. past that and you yeah. officially did it again anyway. Yeah. So the three tips that you would share with people would be what when it comes to how yeah. they can push regardless of their life circumstances. Right. What would those three tips be right quick? Yeah, the three ones is use the skill of hope, use the skill of reframing and push despite your fear because we all fear the oh, fear okay. and push will get you through it persevere until success happens. Those are my three tips for today. Those are your tips. And y'all, you cannot get better tips than that. Reframing and pushing and don't get discouraged. Even if you're afraid to do it, do it. As, as Les says many times, he said, if it's hard, then do it hard. Inch by inch is a cinch, but if it's hard, then do it hard. And Patty actually <laughs> says, I am proud to call you my friend. My yeah, question Patty. is, and I have an autograph. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Patty is one of my good friends, and she has seen me right after I rehabilitated, and she knows about my journey of push and just persevere until, for me, my ultimate success, actually my ultimate success still is my son and my three grandchildren, who I just absolutely love because we leave a certain legacy, and I hope to leave a legacy of push, persevere oh, until success happens. Because my son and my grandchildren, they are watching, uh, all our children and grandchildren are watching us, That's how I mean. we react to, uh, during a crisis. And we can teach them how to push through doing it. I uh, love I'm it. Very, uh, leave a legacy of push. Leave a legacy. How many of you are committed to leaving a legacy of push? Hashtag Sabine Becker or hashtag push. Either way, just put a hashtag in here yeah, as please. we prepare to close out. Let me go ahead and see. It says you are such an inspiration, Vanita says. Mm -hmm. And I see your comment, John. He said the vision of creations and activities must always exist before the creations and activities themselves naturally, automatically. It is impossible to identify anything created or made by any living entity that wasn't visualized or imagined first. These creations and activities only get their existence after the creations and activities themselves are visualized first. Thank you, John. Well, there you go. That's a big comment. I had to put that, that on. That was a long one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you get so much. Fast. Speaking in tongues almost messing with you, John, typing that much. Listen, thank you so much, Mother Harper. Amen. Never give up or give in.
And this no. is from a lady that's in her 80s who has definitely oh. finished. She has uh she was a heart transplant recipient of and she received a 16-year-old's heart and <gasps> and is here today to tell her story oh, as well. Mother Harper. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Absolutely. Push, push. Everybody there you go. Push. Woo, woo, All right, everybody. Push. Listen, that is today's episode. I do want to let you know today is National Road Warrior Day. If you are a woman Ooh. and you're a woman road warrior, happy Road Warrior Warrior Woman Day. And on tomorrow, please make sure that you tune in. And that's why I want you to subscribe to the Kim Jacobs Show. Make sure you tune in because I'm talking with a young man that lives with autism. And mm -hmm. he says that autism is his super blessing. So you will, you'll see this on the Kim Jacobs show, Facebook or YouTube channel tomorrow. So make sure that you tune in and check that out. And then I also want to invite you this evening to Clubhouse on this evening at seven o'clock PM. I want you to screenshot this because at seven o'clock PM, there's going to be a Clubhouse hosted by Dr. Joe D. Bear. That is the QR code. And it's honoring my son that transitioned from this earth seven years ago. His name is Gabriel Michael Jacobs. And we do an annual 5K walk in his honor. And this year, it's going to be this Saturday mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can walk virtually or in person. And I will put all of the information for you to be able to even donate at GabesHeartFoundation.org. If you're able to walk, we'd love to have you walk virtually or in person. And if you're not able to walk, then just please make a donation because we'll do a full week of random acts of kindness called Doing It Gabe's Way. We give out groceries, gas, you name it, it's happening and we're doing it Gabe's way. All right, everybody, uh, what's your closing comment, please, so that I can give everybody the opportunity to hear one last word from you. Are you frozen, Sabine? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, what's, your, what's your final comment? Up. Well, one last comment. Uh, if people want to connect with me, Sabine, there it is, SabineBeggarSpeaks.com. That's the best way to connect to, uh, to me or on Facebook. And I would love to hear from you. Uh, I would love to bring my message out uh, through a TED Talk or anything. Really, just I'm just asking and... Uh, who they shall receive, right? I would love to have a TED Talk uh, to bring the, the my message because I know God spared me. Uh, so I, I really want to make my life count and help others in reframing the adversity into meaningful opportunities. Awesome. Thank you, Sabine. Your story has oh. been wonderful, very inspiring. And thank you all so much for tuning in to today's episode of The Kim Jacobs Show. I'll see you throughout the rest of the week over at The Kim Jacobs Show and you, our YouTube channel. Have a great thank one, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm Kim Jacobs, host of The Kim Jacobs Show, where we're bringing balance to the world one household at a time. Listen, we go live every weekday, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I bring guests on that talk about their backstories, things that they've had to overcome to become who they are today. Many of them are balancing and juggling life and they've become experts in different fields. So they're sharing tips with you to make your life just a little bit easier. Many times as a guest in the studio audience, you'll get a chance to walk away with a missing piece of the puzzle that might be missing in your life. Let's go on this journey together and I look forward to seeing you Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on The Kim Jacobs Show.